Hey guys, welcome to my shop. So, I picked up this chisel, this large two inch chisel, um, at a yard sale this weekend. And since I already have a chisel restoration video, which you can see here, um, I decided that I was going to do something a little different for this video. Instead of restoring the steel, which is what that video was all about, I'm going to I'm going to sharpen it, but I'm also going to be making the uh, handle out of this log that I found on the side of the road and have been drying for a long time. Um, and I'm also going to, for the first time, do some leather work. So I want to make a sheath for this, you know, and I'm going to do a little saddle stitching and a little gluing. And I even, I'm, I'm even going to press my stamp on it, which I just picked up and it looks pretty cool, so I want to try it out. Um, I had this ship from Hex and Hit. They're like a company out of Thailand, but it's really high quality and it looks great. So uh, let's get to it and hope this log works out. It looks pretty tight, great. I have no idea what this log is. I don't know, but it looks really hard, really th tight grain, so it should work out really well. So, uh, let's get to it, huh? Okay, so I cut down my two pieces of leather. I made them the exact same size. They're both six inches long by three inches wide. And uh, the way I got that measurement was I actually la laid the chisel on here. And... Uh, Put the other one on top and just kind of squeeze it down, see if that would be enough stretch from the leather to have enough space to stitch it. And I want it tight, but I want to be able to get it in there. So the next step is to mark my stitching lines. And uh, to do that, I'm going to use a pair of calipers set to just under a quarter of an inch, just set, set to a quarter of an inch, like this. And then scratch a line. Now we take these tools and we punch holes and that will give us our stitching lines. Actually before I do that I'm going to glue these two pieces together on the edges. That way I won't have them moving around while I'm doing this. And this is just some really thick CA glue. I am going to punch a hole through it. And I'm going to start at this corner, work my way up, and then I'm going to go to this corner work my way up and then this the bottom edge or you know the top edge depending on how you see it um, I'll, I'll leave the last just to so I can get the spacing right because this spacing might not be perfect for this so that's why they have like a one a two a four and a six prong fork I don't know what they're called but Really easy, you just hammer them down, make sure you go all the way through. And you move on to the next one.
those are two sides. Looks like I got a little lucky with the, the length of these. Worked out really well. Um, so next we just stitch it up. So the first thing we need to figure out is how long the thread should be. Because we're going to put a, a, a needle on each side of the thread and then we're going to it's become one thread with two needles. So you can't just add more thread. So you got to make sure you know how much thread you're using. And I saw somewhere, or I read somewhere, so you take the distance it would take to travel and then you four times that. So that's two. And then you double that again. That's four. And since I'm new to this, I'm gonna leave myself a little extra just in case. All right, so this should be enough thread for the whole thing. So we put one end of the thread on one needle. And if you, if you put the thread through the needle like this, and then you poke a hole through the thread with the needle, and, and bring it down. See, so you poke a hole through the thread, and then you bring that down to the thread down here, it makes a knot. And you want to try to get that knot as small as possible, obviously. But it makes a little knot around the needle, which should hold. You know, if you should start in the front or the back, I don't know if there is a... a way to do it. Ooh. So use a pair of pliers because it can be kind of hard to match. Alright so you pull your two needles so that they're even and then you start whichever way what I do know is whichever way you start that's the way you want to continue so if you start from the front the whole time you gotta do it through the front. If you start from the back the whole time you got to do your first needle through the back. So I'm going to start through the back because the hole in the back is actually a little smaller so the, the hole through the front will be easier to find. So you want to make sure that you don't poke a hole through the thread with your second needle going through the hole, right? So you want to make sure your needle doesn't hit any thread. But basically that's all you're doing. You're putting one through one side, the other through the other, and then you're pulling them tight. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go to the next hole.
Okay, so I finished all the stitching to the end, but here's the little final trick is how do you tie these so that they don't unravel? Um, I saw a couple of people do a back stitch and then just leave them in there. I actually want to tie it just to feel more secure. So what I'm going to do, and I don't know if this is right, and I'm sure... leather workers will tell me it's not but I'm gonna go back I'm gonna bring this one back and I shouldn't have brought it through the same hole actually no I brought it through the other hole okay so I'm gonna bring this one back through here and I'm just gonna tie them cut them and burn them so I'm just gonna tie them in a knot and like I said, I'm not a leather worker, so I don't know if this is the correct way of doing it, but it'll work. And so we have a little knot right there. I am going to since it's a waxy nylon thread it's not too bad that'll do all right move on to the next step so this next step is just basically this thing is supposed to put a chamfer a bevel on the edges so that it's not sharp so I'm going to see how this works. Oh, that works perfectly actually. It's pretty cool. One thing I have noticed is I've gotten this leather dirty and I haven't been keeping it really clean, but since it's just gonna be a tool, it's fine, but if you're doing something nicer, I guess you would want to make sure you kept it, keep it uh, cleaner. So let's put it in for the first time, make sure it fits before we continue. Yeah, see that's nice. It's nice and tight. It's not coming off no matter what, but it's easy to pull it, push in and out, and it'll get a little easier as the leather stretches. So that's good. So for this next step, I've wet down the leather with just some water, let it soak in, because I'm going to press my logo into it. I had this made. The company for that made this for me is called Hex and Hit. That's H E X N H I T, and they're out of Thailand, and they they do a really good quality uh, brand. And uh, you can either use you know if you have some kind of press or something you can use that you can even use a like a hammer strike I'm going to use this clamp and just apply as much pressure as I can and that should be enough pressure I don't even know how long I'm supposed to leave it in there, but can't hurt. 
So there's that. Let that sit for a few seconds. All right, let's see how it turned out. Not bad. The last thing that I'm going to do is oil this. I'm going to use some ballastol. Ballastol. Usually just keep an oily rag in here. So, I'm going to let that dry for a while and move on to the handle. All right, so the handle is done. Um, I'm just gonna add a little boil in water, and then we're pretty pretty much done. Let that dry for a few minutes, and then we'll put the whole thing together. Okay, well, here's the handle. Just a socket. That is a big chisel. That is a big, heavy chisel. But the handle fits well. And then the sheath. It looks good. I still don't know what that wood is. But there's the finished product. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.